Welcome to the Million Dollar Horse Trainer Live. Now, have you seen that meme? I want you to, to answer this with me. Like, have you seen that meme that says, in order to make a million dollars in the horse industry, you have to start with a billion? Now, how bad of a business proposition would that be? Is that I've got a billion dollars, but I only want a million, so I'm gonna go ahead and lose all of this in the horse industry, right? This is a terrible, like, it's one of my least favorite memes, right? But I'm sure that we've all seen it. If you have seen that, please say I do. Because it really leads to a deep-seated false belief in that in order to anywhere be successful in the horse industry, in horse industry, you have to start with a bunch of money. But what happens if you're in that position where you don't have the money, you don't have the land, you don't have the horses, you don't have the truck, you don't have the arenas, you may not even have the reputation yet. How in the heck are you supposed to be successful in an industry if what the if the status is that you have to start with a billion dollars? So one, I want to share with you how my journey started because I was that person that started with no money, no truck, no horses, no arenas, no family lineage of generational horsemen, right? I'm that oddball in my family that was like, somehow got bit by the horse bug. Um, and honestly, I think it was a, a purpose that God put in myself that was like, hey, this is your purpose. This is who you're meant to serve at the highest level. I want to share with you the journey that I went through because oftentimes I feel that so many of us go through similar experiences. And so, you know, from the very, very, very beginning, of this, the very first job that I ever worked. And I don't know if you guys remember the first time that you were around horses or the very first horse job that you had. Like my first horse job, I was 16 and I couldn't tell you a mare from a gelding, right? I was that green. Seriously, like never been around horses, loved agriculture, loved being outside, didn't want to be involved in my family bit in the family business because I always saw my parents being inside and I wanted to be outside working with animals. And it was the purpose and the passion with the horses that really, really kind of caught who I was, like really drew me in. And about halfway through that summer of working there, there was this head trainer. She was like 23 years old, um, rode on the collegiate equestrian team, did the things, right? And at 16, looking at a 23-year-old, you're like, man, you're old. And so I got to listen to this person, right? Or so I thought. And um, she goes, hey, Colton, like, you know, you're interested in these horses, but like, what, what would you be interested in doing with horses? And I said, you know, like, honestly, I'd be really interested in learning how to train horses. Um, I really enjoy that process on the education of everything. And she's just like, and she cut me off mid-sentence. And she was like, there is no way you're going to ever be successful training horses. You are too far behind. People that are successful in this industry, they start riding when they can just sit up. And you, you've you never even really ridden a horse. So there's no way that you're going to be able to catch up. And I don't know about you. Do you like, have you guys ever had people that have just constantly downplayed the, the, the probability that you could be successful as a horse trainer, right? It could be another trainer like this. <laughs> that was my very first experience, which all she ended up doing to a 16-year-old boy, to be honest with, she just knocked a chip on my shoulder, right? Tell me I can't do it and I'm gonna say, watch me, right? But other things throughout this progression of getting more involved with the horses, I didn't just have other professionals, right? But I had family. I had friends that were like, Say, no, I don't know if this is such a good idea because they're sitting, they're not involved. They're on Google and they're like, you know, how much money do the horse trainers make? And they're like, they all die broke. <laughs> and they're looking up these things and saying like, hey, you know, you shouldn't pursue this. This isn't a good idea, blah, 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 blah. Like, have you ever been that? Do you guys have people in your life that, who is that person or the people that you have had to have converse, tough conversations with that have pushed you saying this isn't possible? right? Because I know it's not just me. Mine just happened to be the very first person that I ever ever opened up to about being interested in doing it. But I went through this. I mean, I went through a Thanksgiving where my family found out, uh, my grandmother did my taxes and my grandfather divulged how much money I really didn't make at my very first job working for a world-renowned clinician, right? They ran my taxes. 
I graduated college. I went through the equine program and I took this job. I was making $200 a week working 24-7, 365 because we lived together. And we traveled the country and we did the things. I was making $200 a week. My grandfather figures that out because my grandmother did my taxes. And she and we, I go to Thanksgiving and the whole family, it was, like a, it was like a Colton intervention during the entire Thanksgiving. Like, you can't keep working with this guy. You're making no money. There's no future. This. He's a, taking advantage of you. You're not going to be able to do this. All this stuff over and over and over. But none of them involved in the horse industry, none of them having the vision of maybe this might be what it takes to get to that next level. Now, would I do it differently? Absolutely, right? But I've always had these people, and I know that you're going through this too with having these people that are constantly, they want what's best for us. By all means and purposes, they want what's best for us. But it's so important to look at the people that have been successful and to model them. Yet, yeah, very early on in my career, right, the very first job, I, I took my very first job, I had that trainer tell me that, and then I went to my second job. And this is where my foundational work ethic <laughs> began within the horse industry. I started on a Wednesday, we packed the trailer Thursday, Friday, we left for a horse show on Saturday, and when we got to that horse show, it was my very first horse show ever, and maybe you take yourself back to the excitement that you had when you went to your own first horse show. But I was so excited. I was like, this is next level, high-end performance barn. Um, and I was really ambitious. I was like, pack my bags the night before, we're ready to go. And I get there and we have 33 horses, 33 horses. Now, by this point, I can tell a mare from a gelding, right? But I'm trying to learn the names of 33 horses. I'm trying to keep them straight. And nonetheless, all of the bridles that these horses wear, they're all independent, right? We have to take this head stall and this bit and this calves and, and this set of reins and put that together for every single horse that comes through. And I am like as greenhorn as greenhorn gets, right? But for me, that became the norm that, oh, we travel like this. We take 30 some horses to horse shows, right? completely established the norm is we were working from 3 a.m. till 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the morning, every night, literally working dawn to dusk. And that laid the foundation for my concept and early on in my career, if, if I'm going to be successful in this industry, I have to make tremendous sacrifices and I have to work from sun up to sun down relentlessly for literally pennies an hour, pennies an hour, to make this work. Now, have you been at those experiences? Maybe it wasn't 33 horses at a horse show, but you've worked for people, you've been involved, you've, you've interned with folks, and you've learned like, hey, in order for me to make more money in the horse industry, I have to work harder. I have to train more horses. I have to have a large barn. I have to have a lot of clients. I have to do this. Like I have to pour in time. I have to make massive sacrifices. I have to even sacrifice my own mental, emotional, and physical health. Because I tell you, at almost every place that I work, one of those three things suffered, right? I worked at places where, you know, that particular barn throughout the course of summer, I was thankful it was only a summer job because we went to multiple horror shows during the summer. I did not get to stay in a hotel, right? I, my first horror show, I packed to stay in the hotel, but you know what I learned? I was staying in a 12 by 12 stall with two other barn helpers, right? So there's three of us in a 12 by 12 staying in there, you know, showering on the at the facility. I was using the same t-shirt that I had that was like my nighttime t-shirt. I ended up using it as my towel and my pillow for the first horse show because no one told me, Colton, you don't get to stay in the hotel, right? You're going to stay at the showgrounds. And, you know, I did that for three and a half out of the four years that I worked there, right, for those summers. And my body was very thankful that when August came around and I had to go back to school, that I did go back to school because my physical health was on the decline, right? And I worked for other people where my mental health sacrificed, my physical health, the emotional regulation, emotional health sacrificed, 
because of these mindsets in the horse industry that we have to work this way. We have to build our businesses in an unsustainable fashion to get there. And so as my career progressed, as I went to build my own program, I started not just looking I looked outside of the industry, but I also started reflecting back on how my parents were running their businesses. I started looking at outs of the businesses outside of the horse industry. Because when I traveled, when I that very first job I took out of college, we were in different barns every four days to a week, all year long. And I was there for like 18 months or so. We were with different barns all the time. I got to see how all of these facilities were running. I got to see how barns that were working really well were running, how barns that were struggling and how trainers who were struggling were running. And I realized, hey, when I built my own program, initially I fell into the trap. I'll be honest. I initially fell into the trap of these broken minds that of working sun up to sundown, thinking that I had to have a lot of horses in the barn to make a living. But then I realized I needed to look outside of the industry. I need to start building a business model that was not in the realm of a traditional horse training model. Why? Because that's what it was going to take to make sure that I could serve my clients at the highest level. Because if you think that by training more horses, by working dawn to dusk, you're actually serving people at your highest ability, you're kidding yourself. You cannot be at your best when you are constantly pouring from an empty cup. And that is exactly what happens when we're, when we're going, working sun up to sun down. We're not taking care of ourselves mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, right? We have to be taking care of ourselves at those levels to be able to serve our clients at the highest level. So I started looking outside of the industry. I built a business you know, a multiple profitable six-figure business just in training horses. And then we later diversified into other avenues to be able to make sure that our business was as solid as possible. So we revamped our entire business structure from the ground up to make sure that we had the exact systems and processes in place to where our business could truly work for us. And what ended up happening when we revamped this entire business structure is that we actually began bringing in the exact clients that we wanted to be working with. We had clients that were happy to pay us even not just what we were worth, but even telling us, hey, you should be actually charging more because they valued what we were bringing to them, the problems we were solving, the, the experiences that we were providing. These clients loved working with us so much. They were like, hey, you should actually be charging more for this. And then we took those systems and those processes and turned it into a simple four-step process, right? Because what we have learned as simple scales, fancy fails. That goes in line with another entrepreneur by the name of Alex Ramosi, who teaches this. Simple scales, fancy fails. It's the same thing is true. You know this is true when it comes to training horses. If you make it complicated, it cannot work. It has to be simple, right? Because those simple systems scale all the way through. That's exactly how we treated our business. When we implemented these proven systems and processes that took us from struggling to get clients in the door to having a wait list that was over 18 months long, clients paying us premium high ticket prices that were two, two and a half, three times the industry average. We also started getting phone calls for all sorts of opportunities to travel the country and teach clinics, teach at expos, teach on world-class stages, do all sorts of interviews and have these other types of opportunities that were able to scale our brand into a million dollar horse training brand, right? And so when we did this, along the journey, I started thinking like my whole purpose, very much I was sitting in the barn one day and I was like, why, what is my mission? Like, why do I do what I do? And this was back when all I was doing, I was a barn, I was just training horses. And, and it came to me as if it was just meant to be. And it was to educate horses and people with a lifetime mind, right? My very beginning of my journey started with helping rescue horses. I wanted to get my horsemanship better from the very beginning so I could help those rescue horses have a better chance. And then as, as I think as God would will it, Right, and these opportunities would come in and we would build our business. We could serve more horses and we could serve more people. And as we simplified our business models, 
He started leading us to other horse trainers that needed help is so that we could teach the exact model that we have built to them. Because if I can help one person, if I can help someone in a clinic, they can go out and help a handful of their friends with their horses. If I can help one horse trainer, that horse trainer is going to work with dozens of horses every year, which is going to impact the lives of more horses and more people, right? So some of you guys may be wondering, like, why share this exact system? It is because our industry, together we can rise, right? I fully believe in collaboration. And so we took this four-step process, the first step being, hey, we have to make some decisions, right? We have to make decisions about building our brand. That way we know who, who, who do we want to work with? Who is, have you ever thought about this? Like, have you ever asked yourself, who is your dream client? What is the dream type of horse that you want to be working with? Because I'm here to tell you that you can be working with that exact person, those exact types of horses, and those exact types of people would love to pay you what you're worth and maybe even then some because they are able to see the value in the brand, in the what you're bringing to the table. So we have an entire process where you, we can teach you how to confidently close these clients to where they feel comfortable, they feel confident, you feel comfortable, you feel confident in that it is a good um, good relationship for all of you. One thing that I always teach is that not every trainer is for every horse and not every horse is for every trainer because there is a trifecta between the owner, between the trainer and between the horse and it has to be the right fit. And we have processes in place that way you can attract the right people, you can close the right people and you're not bringing people into your ecosystem that are not the right fit for you and that you're not the right fit for them. Right, that is super, 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 super important. I mean, how many of y'all that have already been training horses for the public and been training horses clients have had to bring in, you're like, I just have to train this horse. I don't have a choice. I was there, right? I was there in the very beginnings, right? I would train anything that had hair in a heartbeat. And many times trainers think that this is just what we have to do. But then you have to be aware, am I attracting the wrong type of people to my business? And if you keep seeing a trend and you're like, gosh, I am, how do I start bringing in the types of people I actually want to work with? That's why we have a process for this. But all of us, have, many of us almost, and for those of you that haven't gone through this, I want to be able to save you the pain and the heartache because it can be very frustrating. It can be very draining, right? Do you guys remember any clients that you've had where it's been super frustrating, super draining because you knew that they were not the right fit for your program, but you're simply just trying to put food on the table? Right, you got to do what you got to do. It feels like, but what happens if you know a better way to get there? What happens if you have a better process to bring in the right types of clients? That way, you can be putting food on the table with premium horses, with premium clients, doing what you love. It doesn't matter whether your specialty is building relationships with horses, training liberty horses, training for high end performance horses, whether it's dressage, reining, working equitation, doesn't matter, right? Even if you're training trail horses. You can use this exact process to be making sure that you're working with the right people and then you attract them and then you have a way to close them to bring them in. But finally, the other, the, the big, big piece, the last step to this entire process to getting to that building that million dollar horse training brand that you are capable of and that your business is fully capable of is knowing how to then create client experiences to retain those types of clients and to provide additional opportunities to where these clients not, are not just one-time buyers, but they want to be involved with you for a long time, right? You guys ever heard that saying that like a great client will become a friend before a friend becomes a client? It's so true. And it's even more true when you know how to develop. You have See, here's the thing. When we talk about having high ticket clients that want to pay you what you're worth, then you have to understand how these people think. What do they actually want? Because it is not the same thing as a person that is scrounging for price and they're asking you the questions of like, uh, how many days a week are you going to ride my horse? What do I get? What, what else are you going to include? Do I get this? And do I get like high ticket clients? And those types of clients are not the same at all. And for horse trainers that maybe you're in a position where you've been dealing with that one type of client, and you want to work with these high ticket clients so that you can build a multi-million dollar horse trend, right? I just stepped it up a notch and say multi-million because I fully believe for some of you it is more than possible 
within your businesses, then you have to know how to create these experiences. You have to know how to communicate. You have to know how to serve these people. Because guess what? When you learn how to do this, it doesn't just serve them, but it will elevate your brand. It will elevate your business. It will elevate your lifestyle. It will make you, you will be able to take care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. You will find what works for you. You will get your business truly working for you. But it all comes down to knowing that there is a proven process to make this happen. And that's exactly what we're teaching during our live event here at the Million Dollar Horse Training Live, which is why that button is right down below ready for you to click. Now, you might be thinking like, gosh, I just don't know if I'm quite there yet. And I'm here to help you make sure that you understand that you are exactly where you need to be. And this process can help you get there. Now, I know that some of you have gotten to this point and you're going, gosh, this sounds great. I'd love to have it. I just don't know if it's possible for me. I don't know if I if it's meant for me. I don't know if I have what it takes to get there. And it's those internal struggles, right? Is it, am I worthy of being successful? Am I worthy of being a million dollar horse trainer? Do I actually have what it takes to get there? And it all, it's all right here. And I want to let you know that you're not alone in this because one, many other horse trainers that are watching this exact same video are right there with you. But I am also right there with you because I remember when I first started off, right? I was working for another trainer. I got to train a few outside horses. And the very first thing I did after I left that job was I went and when I started my own training program, I lowered my prices. Why did I lower my prices? Because it was the value that was placed on my own worthiness, I put a number on what I thought I was worth. And because I left the shadows of another program, I was told by the person that I was leasing from that I couldn't charge that same rate. And then I convinced myself that I couldn't charge that rate because of the name and the brand that I was previously associated with. So I lowered my price and that price was the outward outward expression of the value that I felt like I could bring to my clients. And the confidence and the ability to be able then to step up to that next level starts right here. But you also need to surround yourself with people that see the value in you. And so for months, months, I struggled to fill my barn. And I was charging $800 a month, full board, full training. And I struggled to fill the barn. And a mentor of mine, he called me. And he had actually referred several people to me. And he's like, Colton, what are you charging? And I told him, he goes, dude, you gotta be starving. Like, how, how are you making it? And I'm like, man, it's tough. It's really tough, but... I'm doing the best that I can do. And it gives me chills thinking about it because I remember where I was. I remember the feeling. And maybe maybe you've had some conversation. Or maybe you're in that place right now. I want you to like just soak it in because it's, it's going to be a feeling that you may never want to go back to, but it will always remind you where you started. And it's a, there's two things in life that move us forward. It is the pain of not wanting to be either where we currently are or not or wanting to avoid a particular type of painful experience and then the other thing that moves us forward is the pursuit of pleasure right the pursuit of being a million dollar horse trainer and to be able to have the things that million dollar horse trainers have like your own facility like really nice horses working with top end clients winning things like doing all the things that million dollar horse trainers do but the other and one of the most Important things that can move us forward is that pain. And for me, and I know for many, maybe you've been in this situation as well, where it's just struggling to make ends meet. And oftentimes, those outward decisions are a reflection of the inward confidence and the worthiness that we see in ourselves. 
And my $800 a month prize was a reflection of what I felt like I was worth. And looking back on it, it was because of who I had started to surround myself with in this next season of life. And thankfully, I had a mentor that reached out to me and said, number one, (laughs) you are getting amazing results because I am seeing the horses that you are sending home and you're doing an amazing job. Now, he did give me a few things I needed to fix and I'm forever grateful for that, right? He says, and he gave me those lists. But he goes, you got to charge more money. He goes, for two reasons. One, you're starving. And two, people are actually not sending you horses because they don't think you can take adequate care of them with as cheap of a price as you've set. And there's a much bigger lesson to it than that, right? But I just, just for the sake of time, I'm going to go that far with it. And the result was, is that as I stepped into that, as I stepped into accepting the fact that I needed to raise my prices. And when I did raise my prices, I also elevated my mindset. I started investing in myself a different way. I started surrounding myself with different people. I started walking different, talking different. And my barn filled up. My barn filled up because someone stepped in and gave me a lifting hand and saw the difficulty because he had been there too. And I shared this vulnerable story with you because I want you to know that I have been there. He has been there. And if you are there, that there is like, I will send, I will give you my hand. That, that Me giving you my hand is through this event to help you take that step to get to that, to break free of this because you are worth going to the next level. You are capable of going to the next level. And it takes some time, somebody from the outside looking in to be able to share with you like that they have been there too. And when I, when I was able to make those internal shifts, I had to overcome my own mindset. I had to overcome the internal belief that I was able, I was worthy. People would actually gladly pay, pay more money because they can see the value, not just in my program, but they can see the value in me, right? I want you to think about it. Like, what would it feel like if people truly saw the value in what you were pouring into your horses every single day? Now, you're, in order for you to say like, oh, I would love for people to see the value in that, maybe it's because you're thinking they don't see it when they do see it, okay? Maybe they do see the value in what you do, but we're our own worst critic, aren't we? As horse trainers, we're in this to constantly be getting things better. We're always looking for the problems. So we're trying to make things better. We're looking for the horse that, you know, if we find tension, we're trying to find softness. If we're looking for a horse that doesn't do a particular maneuver better, we're working at what's not working so we can make it better. And then ultimately what happens is we're constantly looking for to fix problems and we find more problems and we do the same thing to ourselves. And when we do the same thing to ourselves, we can stifle our growth. We can stifle our progress. We can beat ourselves up so, so tough mentally and emotionally that it it cripples us from ever moving forward. And I share that because I did the same. I I went through this and have, I mean, have you ever, like, have you gone through this? Have you ever felt this way? Have you, I mean, maybe, (laughs) maybe it's just me, right? But I, I don't think so, right? And so that is one of the biggest things that will forever, forever hold a horse trainer from coming to be able to go to that next level is being able to shift this internal belief. And one of the most powerful things you can do is to get in a room of people just like that will be at this event that will rise with you because winners lift other people up, right? Losers pull other people down because when they see people winning, it makes them self-conscious. So they want to pull those people down. That was how the very first facility that I leased, that's exactly what was happening, right? As I tried to grow, they tried to pull me back down. They tried to pull me back down. And eventually I had to leave. I had to leave, right? Because I had to get out of that environment. 
right? I had to start surrounding myself with people that would lift me up, right? But the biggest source of strength has to come right here. It has to start inside of us. But if, if you struggle to know how to get to that next level, I, I do implore you to join us at this event, right? Because we're going to lift you up. We're going to lift you up in a big, big way, all right? We've got amazing, amazing speaker coming in, and I'm going to be there to serve you. We have an amazing speaker there to serve you. And this is, if anything you take away from this event, it will be to lift you out of this place, all right? But this isn't the only thing. This isn't the only thing that will hold trainers back, right? Maybe you're thinking like, well, I don't know if I have enough time. I don't know if I have enough money. I don't know if I, ha- I don't have the facilities. I don't have a truck. I don't have a trailer. Like you're looking at, I, I don't have the things that I need to get to that next level, right? And I get it. <laughs> I get it because it took years before I got my first truck. It took a few more years till I got my first trailer, right? It took longer until I, I rode horses for the public for several years before I even owned a horse of my own. So how can a guy that has no horse, no truck, no trailer, no facilities start a horse training business, right? Or how can a trainer that has some of these things but doesn't have everything they feel like they need be able to get to that next level? And we're going to break through this, but like, you know, there's so, there's tactical ways to do this because you, I, there's a fundamental thing that you have to understand is that you have everything you need for where you are right now in your journey, right? And being able to get to that next level, being able to step past and understand, oh, I don't have enough money. There's ways to get money, right? I don't have enough time. That's one of the most age old, let's be honest, because you're coming in for a coaching session, excuses that's ever made. We all have the same amount of time. Broke horse trainers, million dollar horse trainers, billionaires all have the same amount of time. It is understanding how to implement systems and processes like we talked about earlier, having those systems and processes to manage your time, to manage your team, to be able to delegate, to be able to attract the right types of people, to build the brand that you want to have within your business so that you can bring in the right clients, serve those clients, keep those clients, and build an amazing, amazing, amazing experience for you and your horses and your students and your clients, right? It, it takes knowing those systems and the process to say that you don't have that time is not true. It's simply not true. A lot of times it is, I got to make a decision. What's the priority? What's the priority? Am I spending my time doing things that are sucking time away from what I know that I should be doing? Am I not making the decision to go all in because I have some of those internal beliefs that we just discussed. So therefore, I feel like I don't have time because I'm spending my time somewhere else in my life when I truly want to go all in, but I struggle to believe that it's possible, that it can actually work, okay? Is that where you're at? Or are you are you worried about not being able to say, hey, I don't have the fanciest facility. Heck, my facility might even be a little run down. Guess what? That's where I got started too. I got started in a pretty beat up place. And I can tell you that we all start somewhere. And you got to start from right from where you're at. And you build from there. And that's where the decision, that's where we will get into in that first step in the event, right? We have to make some strategic decisions about where we're at and where we want to go. But all of these things, we have to, we have to get right down to the core of this and we gotta strip the BS away from this and realize that saying that I don't have the truck, I don't have the trailer, right? And if you're, if, if you're a parent listening to this and you're telling your kid this, it's not true. If you're a kid, if you're if you're someone else that wants to be the horse trainer yourself and you believe like someone's telling me I don't have the stuff that I need, it's not true. It's not true. I told you at the very beginning, I started with zero credit score. I had zero dollars in the bank 
because guess what? My wife and I had just gotten engaged. We pushed all our money in our personal savings. My business account had zero dollars in it. I got my first training course and we started from there. I drove a 1999 two-door Acura Integra where I would put the sow in the back of it and we would, I would travel and go train horses at other people's facilities in a two-door rusty little two-door car, right? It was nothing fancy. It's like, oh, that's the horse trainer running up, coming up. Oh, we'll see how this goes. But guess what? Focus on getting high quality results. You have everything you need from right where you're at. And where you're at today will not be where you want, where you will be in a week, in a month, in a year, in two years, in five years, in 10 years. If you follow the process, that four-step process, because my goal is that I can teach you how to get there a hell of a lot faster than it took me, right? I'd love to see you get there in a year, which took me a decade. How amazing would that be? But you have to understand that you have to start from where you're at. These, these external things, the stuff, the materialistic pieces that is holding you back up here in your mind, is all it is, is it's holding you back in your mind. Because what you have is probably more than what you had a month ago, six months ago, a year ago, two years ago. You have more than you've ever had, more than likely. And maybe you're starting over. And maybe you used to have some stuff, and now you're back to square one. Guess what? You're not back to square one. You know why you're not back to square one? Because you have a hell of a lot more experience and knowledge than you did before. Because you've lived life. And now you have the opportunity to build from right where you're at. We got, just like with a horse, when we step in that arena horse, you know where we work with that horse from? Right where we're at. And then we make decisions with that horse, with the vision of where we want to go, with the vision of what we think that horse is capable of. And we do the exact same thing in our business. But the difference is that in our business, when you work with us, when we take you through this million dollar horse training event, we have a system. We have a plan. We have a vision. We know where we can take you. We know where the system, when you st stick to the steps, we know where it can take you but it's up to you. And the first thing you have to understand is you have to be honest with yourself and say, listen, I got it. You have to tell yourself, and I want you to tell yourself right now, I have everything I need. You can say it with me. I have everything I need for where I am right now. And if I follow the process, and if I follow the process, I can have more than I ever dreamed of. Because that's where it'll take you. So here's what you need to do right now. And you need to click that button down below to reserve your receipt. And here's why. It's not because you need more information, all right? See, whether it's a book or a DVD like this one here, The Three Masters, that has some of the greatest horsemen, Buck Brandman, Ronnie Jenkins, George Morris, all in one. And you don't need more information, right? Because whether I want to train a Vaquero bridle horse or if I want to train one of the best show jumpers in the world, right? I could, if I just watch this DVD, if I just go and read their books, I'm going to have the information, right? I have access to the information. I have an entire box of these DVDs. I have an entire bookshelves worth of books that teach me how to train my horses. But the, the difference is, is that you don't need more information. You need to learn from the actual people that have done it, right? So if I go and I watch this DVD, will I be able to train a horse just like George Morris? Will I be able to train a bridle horse as nice as Buck Brands? Probably not, right? But what if I went and I learned directly from, and I went and spent time with Buck on the road, if I went and spent time learning from George Morris in his barn, working with him and his horses and having him train me on exactly what I need to be able to do to be successful in the show jumping ring? What if I have Rodney Jenkins there to critique me, to be as successful as he has been? What if I have Buck Raymond right there with me to train me, to teach me how to be as successful as he has been? What is going to prepare me more? Just watching and getting more information? We are in an information overload. So much so it becomes analysis paralysis, right? We don't need more information because if I truly want to be successful in this instance, 
If I truly want to be successful in business, then I have to surround myself with those that have done it that can teach me exactly what I need to be doing in my own business so that I can get there. For me personally, it has been the best investment I've ever made. It's been in hiring mentors to bring me along the journey, to get me the fast track pace. So if you go to the roller coaster part and you buy the fast pass, you get to go straight to the front of the line and you get to save hours of waiting. Why do you pay the little bit of extra money to get the fast pass? Because you can ride so many more rides while everyone else is standing in line for two and a half hours to ride that one ride. And maybe you've gotten to ride that same ride five times, or you've been able to go on and ride the much better rides. And while they're still waiting on the first one, that as soon as you come into the roller coaster park, when you invest in getting that fast pass, which is exactly what you're getting when you get your ticket to this event, is that you are investing in the fast pass to save yourself not just weeks and months, but to save yourself years of trial and error, to save yourself tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in trial and error and time. Because you get to learn from us at this event that gives you the fast pass, the proven methods, the proven processes to be able to take you from where you are today to be able to make those decisions and build a business that takes you to where you want to go, to where you can build a life that you truly enjoy, right? You know, guys, we've seen those videos where it's like the horse girl, the ring that she really wants for Christmas. And it's not the diamond ring. It is that and I think a lot of people say like 80 by 150, but why couldn't it be like a 150 by 300 ring, right? Completely covered, insulated, big ass fans, nice swanky stalls, right? When you invest like in yourself, you step up into that next level. You surround yourself. My dad always told me, show me your friends, I'll show you your future, right? We've all, most of us have heard that, that you're the average of the five people that you surround yourself with. This is an, an investment in you stepping up. And it's such a small investment, right? The tickets are not even that expensive. And you get to surround yourself with people at the highest levels that have made millions in the arena, that have made millions in their business. And now you get to enter that circle and they get to lift you up into that next level so that way you can build financial freedom. You can have the best Christmases, the best birthdays. You can take vacations with your families. You can take time off to go ride your own horses or to go on vacation, to be able to spend time with your friends and family, to make the memories, to not miss the family events that you've been putting off because you got to work, 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 work right? We're, you will step up into a circle of people that know how to build a business that serves them to where they can enjoy their lives, enjoy their horses all at the same time, just exactly how they want to. Because it is about getting your business to work for you so that you can build the life that you want to live. And it is no one else's business. It is all totally up to you as to what that wants to be. So if you want an amazing ranch, if you want an exquisite equestrian facility in the nicest locations, whether that's Scottsdale, Arizona, or up in Wellington or Ocala, if you want to have a ranch in Texas or in Montana, wherever it is in the world that you want to have, right? If you want to have a broodmare band and we have the top end stallions and you want to be managers and you want to be showing horses at the highest level. If you want to be building relationships and hosting retreats for people to build those relationships with their horses. If you want to be performing on the world stages, it is all possible. It is all possible, but you have to make a decision that you're no longer willing to stay where you're at. And you have to acknowledge that you don't just need more information because you know that you have access to so much information, but rather it is getting access to the people that will invest in you because they want to see you succeed as much as you want to succeed. And they're willing to give you their hand and lift you up. You have to make that decision that you are willing and that you are worth it and that you are capable of it and if I know that you are, and you know that you are capable of it, and you know 
that you can't just keep reading more things on Instagram. You can't just read reading more things on TikTok and listening on this stuff because it doesn't get you anywhere. You're just staying busy. But there's a difference between staying busy and making progress. And that's part of stepping up to that next level. So click that button down below. Get your seat reserved. They are limited because we can only host so many people at one time. This is the last time that we're hosting this event before the end of the year. And I want to see you there because I want to help you get to that next level to build that dream that you have so that you can overcome it and realize that you don't have to work dawn to dusk, that there are people that are willing to pay you not just what you think you're worth, but way more than you think you're worth, that you can build a business that truly works for you, that you can build the dreams that you've, that you've had, that no one else thinks is possible. You're capable of doing it. And I know that it's possible because we have done it in our business starting from nothing. And we have helped other trainers follow this exact process in their business. And they've seen exactly how it's possible because they are doing it in their businesses, building million dollar horse training brands. You can be the next one to do it, but you'll never be able to be the next one to do it if you don't make the decision to do it. It starts with a decision. And then from there, we'll keep helping you. We're gonna take you through this exact process in this event. And I can't wait to see you there.